your resistance that you build from your mistakes are roadmaps that you will make to mastery. Say it again. The resistance that you build from your mistakes are roadmaps to mastery. Because once you set your guideline, all right, cool. I lost, you know, $200. I lost $1,000. I lost $5,000. It's not the market's fault that I lost $5,000. It's something in my strategy that I did not stick to. Or the market went another way on me and I'm okay with that. All right, man, today we're gonna talk about overcoming trading trauma. That's right, overcoming trading trauma. So we're talking about as a trader in this game, even as an investor in the stock market, what happens is we tend to hold on to those losses so long and then the residue of those losses haunt us, right? So today we're gonna talk about how, I'm gonna give you some rules, I'm gonna paint some pictures for you but also the goals to help for me to help you become resilient and build up that financial fortitude. Because listen, in order to play this game, in order to be great at this game, in order to see insane profits, in order to change your life financially, you gotta be willing to endure the wins. You gotta be willing to look down that loss right in the eye and be like, all right, I'm gonna take this L, but it doesn't make me move away from the game. And so the key thing for us is being resilient. The key thing for us is being emotionally aware of what's going on and then finding our sweet spot. So listen, before we get into this, man, this is gonna be an amazing breakdown. This is one I've really been waiting on. I want you to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and definitely leave a comment in the chat to let me know if you want more videos like this. So let's talk about it, man. Healing from your trading trauma. So one of the things that hinders most people in this game is they're always looking for the home run. They're always looking for the one play that's gonna make me rich, right? And I'm gonna just go ahead on and break your bubble, right? And it isn't one play that can make you rich, but what it can be, it can be one company that you keep on rinsing and repeating that can truly move the financial need in your life. So for me, um, it's important for me to have a list of 10 to 12 companies that I love. And because I understand these companies, I get to understand the characteristics of them, understanding like what's driving this company. Cause I want us to remember something. Investor emotions drive stock prices. Investor emotions drive stock prices, especially when you're in a trading world, right? So it's also, it's always about how does the whale, how do the whales and the big investors truly feel about a stock? So one, write that down. Investor emotion drive stock prices. Now, let's, let's make that make sense. So for my traders, you know one thing, you've seen a company beat earnings before, but the stock still fall. You've seen a company beat earnings before, you've seen a company beat revenue before, but you've seen a company miss subscribers and the stock fall. Wow, because the stock market is a forward-looking mechanism, and because it's a forward-looking mechanism, people are always asking themselves, investors and whales, they're always asking themselves, how does the information that I just received from this company help me feel great about it in the future? Now, of course, we're talking about in a trading world, for sure. In the investing world, you want to see those companies you know, have those downturns so you can buy them at a discount, right? Because we know that the market goes up 76% of the time. But I wanna tap into this. I wanna really get into this because consistency isn't about hitting home runs. As a matter of fact, if you get to the plate every time and swing for a home run, you'll strike out more than you'll hit a home run. But if you get to the plate and you say, yo, I want a base hit. Because here's the thing about a base hit. With a base hit, you are now in position to steal another base or hijack the market for profits, right? So we can get on first base, like, and what does that look like? It's looking like, what is your setups looking like? What are your fundamental data that you use? What is your role map? What is your recipe? What is your strategy for success when it comes to this game? Now, I will say this, there have been times where I have went away from my strategy. Sometimes I hit, sometimes I lose, more times I've won than lost, but I will say this, your strategy is the most important thing you can ever have in this game next to your emotional wherewithal, right? The strategy that you have, what promotes you or what prompts you to get in the stock? What prompts you to let this winner run a little more? What prompts you to cut this loss? These things are truly gonna be super, super, super important for you. Now, again, consistency, isn't getting up to the plate, looking at your computer, 
watching the market run because it's on TV, letting that FOMO get in. One of the things that will truly put you in a bad position is letting the FOMO of the market make you feel like you missed out. I often say that the money with your name on it, you will not miss it. All right, I want you to write that down. The money with my name on it, I will not miss it. And number three is, what is my strategy? Every time, what is my strategy? For me, a lot of times people will have six, seven different strategies. And that's good because you're supposed to keep learning. You're supposed to keep evolving. This game will truly change your life forever. But conquer one strategy. Then move to the next strategy. Like if you're going to scalp, then scalp. Then move to your leafs. If you're going to lease, then move to your, you know, your swing trades. Your swing trades, all right, what am I doing to do covered calls? What am I doing using to do puts? What is my strategy for the game? Because the strategy is simply a recipe. Watch this. A recipe with details that guide you along the path, right? A recipe is simply a strategy with details that guide you along the path. So one of the things I want to talk about is, I want to show you a couple of situations here. Most of you may know who Bill Ackman is. Bill Ackman is a legendary investor, one of the guys, like, I love just the way he look at the game, his vision for the game, right? Definitely was dope. Uh, Early on in his career, he had a huge, huge, huge beef with him and Carl Icahn. They were adversaries. Like, they cost each other a lot of money. Um, and I want to talk about one specific trade he did. So between 2012 and 2018, he came out and said that Herbal Life was a pyramid scheme. And he said, this company is jipping millions of Americans. Now, I'm not saying that I feel that way. I, I have no dog in a fight. But I want to talk to you about something. I think in this trade, he was emotionally invested. From 2012 to 2018, the stock went from $45 to $92, right? From $45 to $92, and he lost $1 billion. $1 billion. But watch this. Also, another loss he had was in Netflix in the pandemic, right after the pandemic. Right, right when it slowed down, he lost $400 million. You know what he said? It's time for me to get out of here. I got it wrong. Now, I'm not saying that I'm better than him, but at the same time, I got in Netflix and I made about $40,000 on it, right? Because it was, what were the rules, what are the rules that are leading you to get in and what are your rules to leading you to get out? Now, the dope part about Bill Ackman and both of those plays was it didn't discourage him from getting in the market. And I know you can say, okay, Trap, well, he got a billion dollars in the fund. Well, you still need to have emotional fortitude because losing a billion dollars is losing a billion dollars. And you got to explain that to a whole bunch of people that I lost a billion dollars of your money and make them stay on board. One of the ways we can build and heal from that financial trauma or that trading trauma is not sticking in a play for five years. I think he stuck in that play too long because he was emotionally invested, right? Now, let me, let me go hindsight is earlier this year, Herbal Life plunged 30% in a day. <laughs> we talking about, what, 12 years later? And he, saying, he said, this is a great day because this company is a ripoff, right? <laughs> this guy is crazy, right? But to get back to it, what is it that is making you get in the play? And what is it that's showing you to get out the play? And here's what I don't want us to do. I don't want us to stick around and turn a 5% loss to a 50% loss because we keep saying it's going to go back up. This is not buy and hold. We talk about in a trading game, right? So I want you to find out where is your, the, the next thing on here, where is my financial cutoff point? Right, what is my financial cutoff point? And here's why that's important. Because we can lose on a trade and then re-enter the same trade at a different price point and then win on a trade. And I'll give you an example that I did during the pandemic. I mean, not during the pandemic, last year. I got in this AVGO play in September. I knew, like, trap, we don't make no trades in September. None. We know that's the worst month in the market. September 1st, I watched AVGO go from uh, 9.33 to like 9.05. And I was like, yo, this is, nah, this is good. I was like, this is good. I got in a play. That play went from 9.05 to 9.79. But here's what I'm going to tell you. I went against my rules. Because what were my rules? We don't make no trades in September. We let September go out. Watch this. The middle of October, I get out the trade in sep at the end of September. I was down 55%. I got out of the trade. I lost 70 grand on that trade. Real talk, 70 grand on that trade. But watch this. 
I know the company. I understand the company. I should have never made the September trade. I should have waited like I told myself I normally do. But because I understood the company, because I understand how they perform, I understand fundamentally how this is an amazing company, and I know this company moves in bunches. Watch this. I got out of the trade at 797. The trade got back to 806. The motion in the economy changed. I got in the trade at 806 in October. You can check my numbers. You can check the numbers. 806 was when I got back in the trade. I am now about to sell. I had eight contracts. I lost 70 grand. I had eight con I bought eight contracts at 80 at seven at 806. The stock is now a $1,300 stock. I'm up now like 390% on it. Now watch this. Once it passed 100 percent I took I sold four of those and got my money back. Then once it got to 200%, I sold another one, got my money back. Once it got to 250, I sold another one, got my money back. So I done made my 70 grand multiple times, and now I'm about to sell it. The last time I got it, I got one contract left. I'm up $32,000. The stock is up three, almost 400%. Here's why. One, I went against my rules. I went against my rules. Right? And I told you, sometimes it works for you, sometimes it don't, but you have a better advantage if you have the right rules. Right, and then once the trade, for me, my, and most people won't agree with this, and that's okay, but I do deep swings and I do leaps, my financial fortitude is about 50%. I'm willing to lose 50% because I go out a little longer, and I've seen a lot, like, I've seen my companies turn around for me, you know what I'm saying, based on the event. But that was one situation I did not have to go through. But I stuck to my guns. I'm like, all right, I hit 50%. I caught it at 52. I said, all right, yo, we out of it. I took that L. I told my patron I'm taking that L. And then we got back into that 806. Boom. But watch this with Bill Ackman. Financial fortitude. During the pandemic, he had a $27 million bet on credit spreads. From that bet, he rolled that bet all the way to 104. Meaning, he turned $2.7 billion I mean, 27 million into 2.6 billion. That's a 100 fold, meaning he flipped that money 100 times. Financial fortitude. I can guarantee you that that herbal life trade was an emotional trade for him. Once it didn't go his way, he was like, yo, this is not a, you know, he was in it emotionally. He was getting on TV talking about it, but the company just kept soaring, right? But he had somebody on the other side called Icon. He, lost, he made a billion dollars off the trade. So you got some out on the other side, your arch nemesis going. <laughs> I love it. If you haven't seen it, go look it up. You go look up Bill Ackman, Carl Icon, fussing on CNBC. I promise you it is going to, it's going to make you laugh forever. But I want you to understand this. Also, like trends can be powerful, right? Trends can be powerful and they can be persistent. So it's our goal as investors or as trappers to understand how to manipulate trends in our favor. Your resistance that you build from your mistakes are roadmaps that you will make to mastery. I'll say it again. The resistance that you build from your mistakes are roadmaps to mastery. Because once you set your guideline, all right, cool, I lost, you know, $200. I lost $1,000. I lost $5,000. It's not the market's fault that I lost $5,000. It's something in my strategy that I did not stick to. Or the market went another way on me, and I'm okay with that. This game is about probabilities more than it is guarantees. Most people look for guarantees, which is why they lose. Like, I've, I've hit on, out of 30 trades, we're probably up on maybe 25, 25 trades. But I'm going to lose some. Right? And then people will get mad, like, man, but I've never said that I was 100 for 100. No one is. No one is. So the resiliency that you build through your losses become the roadmap to your mastery in this game. And so today I want you to de start developing that. I want you to develop your strategy, and I want you to practice that strategy. Right? Now, I'm going to be real with you. I'm not the, the person that tell you use fake money because fake money doesn't feel the same. And I think for me, that's how I built up my resiliency because I always used real money, right? But I, you never use money that you cannot afford to lose. Like, don't put your rent money in there, right? Like, don't put your medical money there, right? But if you got $100, $200 and started going to buy some tennis, man, put that in your account. Stack it up till you get $2,000, 
right? $1,000 or $1,500. All right, cool. Now, let me get my list of stocks that I really love. Let me understand those stocks. Let me look at how they move. Do they move two, three dollars a day? Do they move one dollar a day? Is it a five dollar a day? Coming like Nvidia and AVG, or they a five, ten, twenty dollar a day? Coming like Uber, move one, two dollars a day, three dollars a day. Understanding the identity of a company is so important for you because these are the metrics that help us build up that financial fortitude so we can heal that trauma. Also, I want us to understand something, right? Our identity as a trader is important. What attracts you to the market? What, what attracts you to a company? What attracts you outside of the idea of, I'm just gonna make a lot of money, right? That, I'm gonna be real with you, that should not be in your, I wanna make a lot of money. No, the goal should be, yo, how do I, how do I make a thousand? How do I make 2,000? Uh, for me, it's even different. Like, I'm going for 100%. How do I get 100%? What do I need to do to get 100%? What plays put me in position to optimally gain 100%? Um, what plays put me in position to, to get to that, like to get my re-up money, like I like to say, right? So understanding that will help you play this game. When you make the mistake, do not beat yourself up about the mistake you made. It's okay, we make them. I literally just made a mistake two weeks ago. I put in an AVGO play for, my goal was to put in the AVGO play for 1380. I pressed 1440 by mistake. I was like, dang. And I realized that once I put the order, I'm like, 1440, oh man. So I had to go back and hit the play that I really wanted, right? And the play is down right now. But it was like, all right, I'm a, if it does this, I'm gonna cut my L on it, I ain't tripping. But mistake happens, mistakes happen. We moving, we excited, we got things in play. Pay attention as much as you can. Mistakes will happen. I'm not coming here like I'm Superman, y'all. I'm not coming here telling y'all that you are not gonna lose and trap gonna make, I'm coming here telling you, yo, mistakes are gonna be made. Losses are inevitable, but growth has to be non-negotiable. Right, you have to build up that and you have to take into that. I, I'm gonna take an L, but my L's gonna be small, but my W's gonna be big. And what I mean by that is, I'm gonna have more W's than L's. Simply put, I'm gonna have more W's than L's. In the chat, tell me if you wouldn't mind having 30, I mean, if you did 30 plays, if you wouldn't mind winning on 25 of those plays and taking the L on five. I don't mind that, right? It's, a, it's the cost of the game. Watch well, what I'm about to tell you right here. The losses are your down payment to being successful in this game. That's right. The losses are the down payment to being successful in this game. And what you want to do is be able to look at the loss. I remember when I lost $120,000 on PayPal in 2021. Man, that was the biggest loss I ever had in my life. But guess what? For three months, I studied that play. That one play, I stopped trading for 90 days. And I just did the research. What did I see on this play? What went wrong on this play? Why did I hang in it so long? What did I do? What could I do better? When should I have cut it? Right, came back, again, 30 something plays in. 2021, we hit for, I mean, 2022, we hit for 150. 2023, we did 350. This year, we are 1.3 million just in options. You know why? There was so much for me to learn in that loss. So much for me to learn in that loss, and I didn't give up. And so I don't want you to give up on this game. I promise you, this game can change. Look at the CEO of Oracle, right? The guy is up. The stock went up 40% in a day, and the dude now became the top five richest men in the world. Mark Zuckerberg made uh, $12 billion in a day. Why? Because the stock went up. This is how the game, man, this game changes people's lives. If you get your strategy, you get your financial fortitude in order, you can truly heal from that trading trauma. And if you stick with it, and you get the right teacher, and you get the right blueprint, I promise you, I promise you, you're gonna change the game for yourself. Now, one of the things we did in the Patreon, I'm not gonna lie, my people, they'll be down on certain plays and I'll be like, are you scared or are you rocking because I'm rocking? They'll be like, I ain't gonna lie, trap, I'm scared. I'm like, it's cool, it's okay to be scared, it's okay to be nervous. You ain't never saw yourself down three grand, five grand before. You ain't never saw that before, right? But guess what? Trades turn around, they like, dang, trap. But guess what we did in real time? We built their financial fortitude in real time. And so now they can look back and be like, damn, like trap stuck to the details. Trap, trap stuck to his process. Trap stuck to X, Y, Z, his recipe. And I'm, I'm watching him stick to the recipe so that helps you in real time, man. Listen, I hope, I hope, I hope that this, I hope that this truly helped you. I hope that this will help you like get over your trading trauma. 
um, because this game will truly change your life. I want you to walk toward the L's, not saying make mistakes on purpose, but I want you to get into that one strategy and I want you to play it. And if it goes right, I want you to set yourself a goal. Like, is it 2%? Is it 5%? And if it goes down 2%, how do I feel? But also don't stray away from your gut sometimes. Like some, I'm not gonna, like sometimes your gut, you, you see it, you visualize it, but that's from being in the game. Being in the game, you start to visualize, you start to see certain things. You ask certain quarterbacks, like a certain people, you, like, you might ask Steph, man, why you shot this thing from half, half court? You know, he can't explain why he did it, but visually he understands, oh, this is my spot. Boom, you know what I'm saying? Certain things you're going to do in the moment, Patrick Mahomes, throwing the ball, side on. In the moment, your financial fortitude, that, that will to play, that will to win, that's definitely going to change you in this game, man. Listen, man, it's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. Thank y'all for listening to this video. I hope y'all like it. I hope it truly adds value to you as, 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 as you evolve in this game. I definitely don't want you to stray away from it, and I don't want you to be hesitant to play this game. Uh, check me out each and every Tuesday on Trap and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Wall Street Looks Like Us Now Network. And also, it is available on all podcast platforms. Trap and Tuesdays, man. It's your boy, The Wall Street Trapper. Salute.